Hey, what's up everyone? Tedrick85 here, and today I'm going to be talking about Battletoads and Double Dragons, the NES. I was originally going to review this game for the Super Nintendo, but unfortunately my SNES crapped out on me while I was recording footage for this review. Needless to say, I was really disappointed because I prefer the Super Nintendo version, but to be honest, there is no real difference between it and the NES one other than the graphics are better and the music sounds better on the SNES. I know some of you are probably thinking, Aw oh, jeez, another Battletoads game? How impossible could this game be? To be quite honest, I find this game much more enjoyable than Battletoads. Perhaps the biggest reason is because it's nowhere near as hard. Not to mention that you get to play as Billy and Jimmy Lee from Double Dragon, as well as Rash, Zitz, and Pimple from the Battletoads game. This is one of my favorite games for the Super Nintendo, and it's just as fun and satisfying on the NES as well. Usually I wait until later on in the review before I play any kind of music, but the opening music to this game is really kick-ass. It's definitely among my all-time favorite starting music in any video game. To me, it doesn't sound as good on the NES as it does on the Super Nintendo, but it's a powerful tune in which once I listen to it, I'm like, yeah, now this is a game I want to play. Here, listen. The graphics of this game are virtually identical to those of the first Battletoads game, and it's not hard to see that the Battletoads were meant to be the stars. Even the game's HUD is the same, where you see your points total, hit point meter, and your lives tally represented by 5 hearts. I had spent most of my Battletoads review complaining about how hard the game was, that I didn't even really talk much about the graphics, so I figured I'd return back to normal and talk about them right away here. What I find really impressive was how the game designers were able to integrate Billy and Jimmy Lee in this game without changing their overall appearance any. They look practically the same from what they do in the Double Dragon games, so I really have to give Rip props for meshing the two franchises together rather seamlessly. I think the controls in this game are also an improvement on the ones from Battletoads. They seem to be tighter in terms of controlling a character, and jumping isn't as awkward as what it was. The control scheme is also identical, where A is to jump and B is to hit. You can also do what's called a smash hit, by tapping the D-pad twice to run, and then press B when you're ready to hit an enemy. I found this to be an extremely effective attack, even against some of the bosses in this game. You can easily defeat the first boss of the game, a Bobo, simply by hitting him repeatedly with a smash hit so you can progress to the next level. I should also add that all the characters, whether they're the Toads or the Lee Brothers, control the exact same way and don't seem to have any real distinguishing traits among them in terms of their abilities. Oh, and I should also mention there's pause music for this game as well, even though it's not as awesome or catchy as the one on Battletoads. All it is is a watered down version of the track of whatever level you're on. It's still neat to listen to whenever you need to take a break or a distraction comes up. Here's a sample of this game's pause music. This game also seems to be significantly more generous in terms of power-ups. Most are found in small gray capsules. Some award you points, while others give you an invincibility power-up as well as an extra life here and there. The best thing about finding these capsules is that they seem to come up and reward you at times when you most need it, like if you need just a few more points for an extra life, or it gives you invincibility powers when you're facing off against a tricky enemy or a group of enemies. There aren't as many levels in this game as there are in the first Battletoads game, seven in all to be exact as opposed to the twelve found in Battletoads. However, this game replaces quantity with quality, because each level is a bit longer than the ones found in Battletoads, and is usually divided into two or three parts. The best part is there is still a bit of variety between each level found in this game, 
making for an exhilarating experience without feeling dull and stagnant. I'm going to review each level for you, so if you don't want me to spoil things for you, please feel free to fast forward this video. The first level pits you on the tail of the Dirt Queen's Rat Ship. I love how this level is set up in the same false 3D perspective like in Battletoads. As expected, this level isn't that hard at all, as long as you make quick work of the enemies here, especially the flying robots. I personally enjoy using the Toad's battering ram move to take them out quickly. I admit the hands can be a bit tricky to deal with, especially if you're new to this game, but as long as you keep moving, it won't smack you. I already mentioned that our Bobo is the boss here, but he shouldn't be too hard either as long as you keep using either the Toad's battering ram attack or the Lee's flying kick on him. The second level isn't that much harder than the first, and it's set up in the same pseudo 3D perspective. You get to beat up more thugs as well as get reacquainted with the walkers. There also seems to be a good amount of gray capsules here, so make sure you'll get them when you get the chance. At the end of the first two sections of this level, you have to deal with a maniac that throws sticks of dynamite at you. The key is to quickly throw them right back at him through an open door before they flash and explode. One question. Why didn't this genius bother closing the door, especially the second time you see him? Talk about a gruntin' for punishment. After the first two sections of this level, you are then greeted with this game's Turbo Tunnel. When I first played this and I saw this Turbo Tunnel section, I said to myself, Ah, oh, dear God, not again. Immediately, I started having flashbacks of all the horrible memories of Level 3 of Battletoads, and I couldn't believe I would see something like it again. I actually thought about turning the game off here, but since I'm not a big fan of quitting, I figured to myself, Okay, I may be a glutton for punishment, but just out of curiosity, Let's see how bad this section is. I was truly expecting this to be as difficult, if not even harder, than on the NES. And guess what? It isn't! In fact, this section is so easy, I really don't understand why they had to make it so hard on Battletoads. The only real threat in this Turbo Tunnel level are the enemies. If they knock you off your speed bike, it's an instant kill. However, they are so easy to deal with that even they shouldn't be considered much of a challenge. I found this turbo tunnel section quite enjoyable, and it actually made me wish it was a bit longer. That's how much better it is than the wretched NES turbo tunnel level. Before I talk about the next level, there is something I needed to disclose right away. The following footage contains material that is not intended to be funny in any way. The third level is the longest in the, in the game, as well as arguably the hardest one as well. It's not so much hard because the enemies or the obstacles in it, even though some of them can be tricky to negotiate through, it's the sheer length of it. This level consists of three parts, and each one takes a few good minutes to get through. This level is set up in a 2D platforming manner, meaning when you press down, you duck instead of going down on a three-dimensional plane like in the first two levels. N not only do you have to deal with the Linda Lash enemies here, but you also get to take on the birds from the second level of Battletoads, turrets attached to ceiling and walls, and electric beams. Each act gets progressively more difficult, and it's not hard to get a little fatigued playing this level, keeping an eye on all the various obstacles and contains. You know how I said a minute ago that there's material here that's not funny? Well, that's because I'm referring to the Linda Lash enemies here. To be honest, I'm not very comfortable about this. Why couldn't they have brought back the enemies from the last level and made them a little more difficult? I understand the game developers doing this simply because the final boss is a woman, but the way your characters attack them is quite bothersome. I think they could have had, at, at the very least, made it less brutal when you attack them. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but this is the one thing I really didn't like about this game. Anyways, the boss of the third level is a guy named Roper, who relies more on his guns than his actual guns, so to speak. He's not too difficult either, just as long as you keep your ears open for an audio cue. This audio cue alerts you when he's about to shoot. Simply duck to avoid it, and be sure you do, because his gunfire packs quite a wallop, and he can really make you pay if you don't recover fast enough. Simply do your smash hits on him, and he should go away in no time. The fourth level is by far my favorite in the game. It's set up much like the style of Asteroids, and it's freaking awesome! <laughs> The first half of the level has you and your ship shooting asteroids, mines, and saucers. This level serves as a nice break from the beat-em-up style of the game, and I love how it gives you something completely different for you to do. 
The second half has you taking on the rat ship. The object here is to destroy each part of it before it destroys you. You'll know what parts to hit just by seeing where its lasers are coming from. This can be a bit tricky, especially when you have to avoid the weird bubbles coming from the front of it, or the bigger side cannons of the ship. But as long as you're careful, you should have a few problems winning this dogfight. Level 5 takes place on a missile headed for Earth. This is a long level too, though not quite as long as level 3. Also like level 3, it's set up in a 2D fashion. This level can be quite hard, especially when trying to avoid all the flame cannons, as well as dealing with the big bull enemies you'll find inside the missile. There are also more of the thugs like in the se second level, but there is so much more annoying here. They throw stars at you and somersault all over the place, making them extremely tricky to get a hit on them. My advice is to jump as soon as you see the star in his hand, and try to jump at him while he's somersaulting so you can land a hit. The level's boss, Robo Manus, can also be tricky to deal with, though he's not quite the headache as he was in Battletoads. The key in this fight is to keep him in the air with your smash hit moves. Once he's on the ground though, he is a tough cookie to deal with, so make sure once you have him off the ground, keep him there and this should be a quick fight. The last two levels are short and not hard, but the bosses you'll face at the end of them can be brutal if you're not careful. You face the shadow boss at the end of the sixth level, who is Lee Brothers' arch nemesis. The key to fighting Shadow Boss is to keep an eye on his attacks and where he disappears and reappears. It takes quite a few hits to defeat him, so make sure you don't take too much damage when fighting him. The final level has you fighting against hordes of enemies similar to the ones you saw in the first level, which can be quite a pain to deal with. However, it's not nearly as much of a pain as the hand enemy at the end. You have to be really quick to register a hit on this thing, because it won't stay down for long. As I mentioned before, the final boss is the Dark Queen herself, who is just as annoying to deal with, if not more so, than the original Battletoads. It won't be so bad, but she heavily relies on getting some cheap hits on you. Also, she surrounds herself with fire, so it's very difficult to get near her without taking a plethora of damage. The good thing is that occasionally the computer spits out capsules so you replenish some units of health if you need them, but even so, you have to be extra careful just getting those. The game's ending is pretty decent, far better than Battletoads ending in my opinion. At the very least, it'll leave you somewhat satisfied when you see it. The subtitle for this game is The Ultimate Team, and it's not hard to see why. No matter whether you're playing as one of the Toads or one of the Lee Brothers, this game is a lot of fun and has improved on the flaws of the first Battletoads game. Fans of both Battletoads and Double Dragon will enjoy this game, as it not only takes them on a trip down memory lane, but also gives them a new and exciting gaming experience that will surely create more lasting memories. It's not hard to see why this game garnered generally positive reviews. This game is a perfect mashup of two classic beat-em-up NES games. This is one of those games that I find myself going back and playing on my spare time. Heck, I might even do a playthrough of this in the future. I think it would be really cool if somehow this game ends up on a Wii U Virtual Console. So if you want to play an action-packed and thrilling beat-em-up game that will have your adrenaline pumping and leave you smiling ear to ear, I highly recommend playing this game. I'm sure that you'll have a great time doing so, even if you're playing with a friend. Oh, and before I sign off, I managed to salvage the title screen sequence from the footage from my Super Nintendo before it went on the fritz. Personally, this is my all-time favorite title screen music I have ever heard in a video game. And if you don't get pumped up to play this after hearing it, then nothing will. I figured I'll play it for you if you haven't already heard it. So thank you for watching this review, and I will see you next time. Feel free to jam to this awesome title screen music if you want.